In July 2012, a small audience in Walsall witnessed a remarkable event in the Cultural Olympiad programme. Life is a Game was a groundbreaking application of creative digital technologies to the world of wheelchair-bound young people living with a life-limiting illness in the West Midlands. Enabled by Acorns Children's Hospice, and with the specialist expertise of West Bromwich Albion Electric Wheelchair Football Team, the University of Plymouth IDAT Lab for Creative Research into Digital Art and Rosetta Life. This research project explores how the imagined experience of actually being in a computer game can empower wheelchair-bound young people by offering them a world of virtual movement and active physical embodiment over which they have some control. And this year was the first year that we dedicated it to working with young people and children. And one of the exciting things for me about this year is that children have had the opportunity to work with Mike Phillips. Yes, we've had the uh, amazing pleasure of working with Rosetta Life, with Acorns and these amazing kids as well, trying to really create a parallel universe which was designed entirely by the children. What we've done is we've augmented this space uh, to allow us to create a portal to the game space. And that's done through a series of sensors. These are actually surprisingly simple. Uh, they're, they're mainly touch and, and light sensors. So when the children perform uh, their game, they score their goals, they get through their tasks, it triggers things in the game. But for now, I'd like you to give a massive hand to the children from Acorns Hospice who are going to come through the door and give a massive, massive hand of applause. Bring them on stage. What we're looking at here is a bunch of kids in wheelchairs playing football uh, and in a parallel universe, there's this game running and we're decoding them in real time and placing them in this 3D game environment, which Lance over here has uh, built with assistance from other members of IDAT. You're going to see a visual representation of everything they're doing, so... How about this? In relation to the fire task, energy task, water task, gravity task, you're going to see some sort of visual representation of each of those using particle emitters. This basically captures their, their activities by a bunch of sensors which are attached to the various activities that they do on, on the uh, ball and the goalposts and things, these cones that are dotted around. So whenever they perform a task in here, it is replicated in the game environment and triggers uh, the activity that you'll see shortly. The action takes place on a planet called... Diamond Era. Yeah, that's right. And suddenly, from another planet, dun dun dun, in comes a baddie. And this character that you created, this terrible, evil, nasty character that comes in looking for your diamond, <laughs> he had horns and a tail and he was covered in slime. And Can you remember the name of the planet he came from? Planet Gangrene, yeah, that sounds pretty awful. So this baddie, who today is being played by Paul from West Bromwich Albion, um, <laughs> is represented up here, but you are going to try to keep your diamonds and defeat Gevel, and what do you have to do to save your planet? Four challenges. Four challenges. Life, gravity, energy, water as well, yeah. What you're going to see up there is this um, really interesting planet, the Diamond Era, where these, uh, the design that these kids have come up with uh, has created a bunch of avatars, a bunch of kind of super characters who perform various tasks against a rather unpleasant creature called Evil. Right I mean, they've been very active in designing these characters. You know, that they, they put a lot into them. So, what I hope we're doing here is we're, we're kind of manifesting that persona in this game environment. On the moon? The moon? Yeah, because yeah. Jake, he's li Jake's, some of them have got more movement than others. Jake's got no movement within his body. Right. Other than his hand which he uses to drive. Yeah. So Jake's would have to be centred more around his chair. Okay. So you're thinking like on the moon, but have them 
like the old Jetsons used to go along, hadn't they, in the little yeah, backpacks yeah, yeah, yeah. and fly along okay. so that he can be using yeah. his chair movements rather than his own movements yeah. onto the characters. Right. So we could look at how you could modify some of these things. So, you know, with, with your, your hand you could actually activate things. So what we've got to figure out is what moves, whether we capture your moves or whether we just animate your moves. Shrek, yeah, Shrek is motion captured, I think. So what you've got there is the actor walks around, uh, but they cover the person with loads of little dots, and then they capture that video of the person talking, then they map those dots onto a 3D model. So then the 3D model starts talking whenever the character talks. Now, we can't quite go that detailed, but we can capture movements, you know, arm movements, we may be able to capture the movement of your wheelchair. It's up to you if you want to do this, but freeze, the action, is that you have an open palm. Is your freeze, everyone? So we've got freeze, brilliant. Yeah, that's it, brilliant, Jake. We are figuring out for, the, for them to do specific movements that will control the characters. So, for example, we've got, if we make a fist, the character would do a punch. We had about four different moves for flying. So we're having, we're simplifying it, so one certain movement is to fly, one certain movement is to punch, mm -hmm. and then obviously like 360, like reversing, going forward, that's all stuff they do in wheelchair football anyway. But I think the more they do it now, I think it's, and because we simplified it as well, I think it'll be easier to get it. Once like the technology people come in like this afternoon and they get to see their characters, I think it'll click yeah. and they'll be like, that's yes. Exactly what I was saying. They'll create this character and then they'll take on the role of this character. They are the, still themselves playing a game of football, it's just that these certain movements create this character that's up there mm. to do something. Um, they also created, completely from scratch, the sound effects um, that accompany the characters and the moves. Well, I mean, throughout this, I've uh, been just creating sound effects and uh, a, a piece of music as well. So there's a soundtrack for the video aspect of it. What's called? Challenge 3, Boulder Bash. Uh, and also sound effects, which is uh, partly some speech has been recorded by the participants I've affected to make them sound a bit more uh, computery and sort of uh, space age, I guess. Uh, but there are also some incidental sound effects like earthquakes and uh, things that would sync up to the characters that we're going to see animated on the screen. Uh, and then the performance of this game as well, linked to that sense of proprioception, the different sort of sense of body movement. I think hopefully you should give them, but also the audience, a kind of weird understanding of, of these parallels between the virtual and the real. Proprioception is our ability to uh, extend our bodies into different environments. So whenever we get in a car, uh, you know, we actually feel the edges of that car. It, it doesn't take us very long to adjust uh, to the edge of our uh, the edge of our sort of reach to actually en engulf a whole car or, or even a room that we might occupy. Um, and our bodies are very good at doing that and, uh, uh, and what this game does is extend the machinery of, of the wheelchair into the machinery of this environment. Life as a game marks the beginning of a process whereby digital gaming could offer an unforeseen world of movement and control to young people who have never known anything other than the constraints and limitations of life in a wheelchair. This unique project has mapped a possibility and in so doing conferred an unexpected sense of beauty on movements that were hitherto seen as merely clinical and mechanical.